Before removing an existing fueling system, carefully mark all of your incoming wires with numbers and write down where on the old equipment these wires land. This will be essential to a speedy and correct installation of the PV100. Also note if any surge protection has been utilized in the unit because that means it's probably going to be needed in the PV100 as well. Unpack all of your equipment and inspect it for shipping damage. Make sure all of the parts listed in the manual have been included in the box. With the PV100 you should at least have the following items. A package of cards if this is a carded system, internal USB drive, cabinet keys, noise suppressors, and the installation manual. Remove the old unit from its mounting position and set it aside. It's now time to plan the placement of the PV100. Be sure to follow the instructions in the installation manual so that it's not mounted in a hazardous area. We decided to use the pedestal in this application, so we need to square the base plate and mark the holes for the anchor bolts. Be sure to use all four anchors. Next, attach the PV100 head to the pedestal using the four mounting bolts that were included with the unit. These bolts will start in the pedestal below and thread up into the PV100 head. Once all of your bolts are tight, you're ready to let the electrician do his job and get the pre-marked wires over to the pedestal. Make sure he knows that the adhesive numbers affixed to the wires are essential to your being able to land the wires correctly in the new equipment. So if he has to extend the wires, he'll need to keep your same numbering for each wire. Remove the USB connector running from the door port to the main board. Next, remove the Lexan shield covering the PCM. Now use the diagram found in your installation manual to guide you as you connect your high voltage and low voltage wiring. Be sure to lay the Lexan cover that you removed to get to the PCM in a location where it will not become scratched. When looking at the PCM, the pulsar connections will be on the left and the hook signal, neutral, and S1, S2 will be on the right for each relay. Once all of the wiring has been landed and you have double checked to confirm that the wires are tightly connected, remove the paper strip from the SIM battery. If you ever need to cold start the system for any reason, you will place the piece of paper or business card back in the clip as shown to wipe out all configuration settings, except for transactions. Those are unaffected by a cold start. We need to set the PCM dip switch positions now to tell the system how to interact with the pumps. Skip switches 1 and 2 for the moment and go to switch 3. If you have a pulsar that is passive, meaning that it is a simple on and off switch and sends no pulse voltage signal, then set this to on or closed. If you have an active pulsar, meaning that every pulse is a low voltage signal, then set this to off or open. Next is dip switch 4. This selects either mechanical or electronic pulsars. Mechanical pulsars tend to be noisy, so selecting mechanical will cause the PCM to apply a noise filter to the signal. Finally, you'll need to set dip switch number 5. This determines how the PCM knows that the hook has been activated at the dispenser. Most of the time, you will set this for voltage sense. In other words, when the PCM senses a 120 volt line voltage on this wire, that means that the pump is in use. You would wire this type to the high voltage side of the PCM and set the switch position off or open. In a few applications, however, you would bring your hook signal to the low voltage side of the PCM because it's not sensing voltage, but simply a dry contact closure. In this case, you'd set dip switch number 5 to on or closed. Now let's test to see if all of your wiring was successful. Set switch number 1 to the on or closed position and power up the unit. You should see the red LED marked relay is lit. When you activate the pump for relay number 1, the in use yellow LED should light up. If you dispense some product, the green LED labeled Pulse should flash while dispensing. Return dip switch setting 1 to the off or open position. Repeat this process if you have a hose on relay 2 by using dip switch number 2. Now make sure your switches are set for normal operation and you're ready to program the unit for your customer's operational preferences. Let's start with programming a non-card system. First, after the initial power up, enter 1 for the first card then enter the customer's chosen PIN, confirm the PIN, then enter the user's ID number again. Then the system will ask you if you want to enter manager mode. Answer yes, and then answer yes when it asks you if you want to use one as the manager's login. It's a good idea to create a second login, number two, as a backup manager's ID. Confirm this, and now you're ready for startup programming. Now for a card system. The PV100 system was shipped with a master card with the PIN written on it. Insert this card and enter the PIN. 
It will ask you to confirm this and then it will tell you that the new card pin has been configured. When you swipe the card again, it will ask you if you would like to enter the manager's mode. Answer yes. It's advisable to make another manager's card in the case the primary card has been lost. Ask the customer to place the secondary card in a safe or some other secure location. Now you will have access to the programming menus. This is where it's essential to know the needs of your customer. How do they want the system to operate? Pin entry when a card is swiped or no? How many gallons of a product can someone pump? How long can they pump? You probably need to sit down with the manager and the manual beforehand and explain each option, then write down their preferences. This will make programming the unit much faster.